With only you, God, only you, God, my joy comes in the morning. Yeah, yeah, joy comes in the morning. With only you, God, only you, God, my joy comes in the morning. Yeah, yeah, joy comes in the morning with you. With you, Jesus, with you. Mm-hmm. With you. Thank you, Jesus, that your joy comes in the morning. Fill us with the light of your word and your truth today and lead us and guide us by your spirit. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, Kathleen Carnelli here, and we are picking up today in James chapter 2, starting in verse 8. Let's read that together. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. So it says here, if you fulfill the royal law. And why is this in particular law called royal? It sounds pretty important, doesn't it? Well, for starters, this law comes from the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. Our most royal majesty, God Almighty, put this law into place. Do you remember when a lawyer asked Jesus in Matthew 22 what the greatest commandment in the law was? Well, as a lawyer, we know that he understands the law very well. And the Bible tells us that his motive in asking Jesus this was to tempt him or to test him. Jesus, of course, being the Son of God, has the exact answer to give back to him. And he says in verse 37, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law, and the prophets. So Jesus responds and brings it all down to two great commandments. That's pretty amazing considering how many laws and commandments are actually in the scriptures. The first five books of the Bible, which I'm sure that lawyer knew very well, in Hebrew is called the Torah, which translated means law, which contains well over 600 commandments just right there. So for him to narrow everything down to two great commandments for us to focus on because all the law and the prophets hang on them, that's something we really want to pay attention to. So let's take a look at just the Ten Commandments, for example. If we do the first great commandment, which is to love our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, we are naturally going to fulfill the first four of the Ten Commandments. Number one being to have no other gods before him. Number two was not to make any idol out of anything above in heaven or below here in earth. Number three is not to take the Lord's name in vain. And number four is to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. Those four commandments have to do with our relationship with God. And if we do that first great commandment that Jesus told us, we're not going to put another God before us. We're not going to take his name in vain and so forth. And then the second half of the Ten Commandments is just like it, except they're dealing with our relationship with the people around us. Number five is to honor your parents. Number six is you shall not kill. Seven, do not commit adultery. Eight, do not steal. Nine, do not bear false witness against others or tell lies. And 10, do not want or covet what other people have. All of those commandments are fulfilled when we do the second great commandment that God gave us to love our neighbor as ourself. So when we break down the Ten Commandments like this into the two sections, our dealing with God and then our dealings with the people around us, we can really see how the two great commandments causes all of these things to be fulfilled. These two great commandments are very powerful. They help us to direct our focus so we don't have to worry about keeping up these long lists of laws. Instead, we set our heart to love God and to love others. We also must remember that number one is so important that it comes first because if we don't love God in that way, we're not going to be able to love those around us like that with that kind of capacity. 
And when we are motivated by love, it will not be burdensome. 1 John chapter 5, starting in verse 2 says, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. So it's not hard when we are empowered by the love of the living God, the one that dwells in us by faith and through the power of His Holy Spirit we bear this fruit of love. This is completely different than the dead works of the past. Like the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 about how trying to live up to the letter of the law killeth, but the Spirit gives life. In the same way, it can kill you trying to keep up with every single thing in the law. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, you set your affections to love God above all, and others as yourself, you will walk in life and life more abundant. And in those ways that you have found yourself falling short, you remember that Jesus has fulfilled all the law for us. So here in James chapter two, we talk about this royal law. And I want to ask, does that sound familiar to you at all? Royal law? You remember something called the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I know I remember hearing that growing up for sure. But stop and think about that. Golden, royal, law, rule. Well, here we have it. The true golden rule is the royal law we see here in Scripture. That is given by God. And we certainly will do unto others as we want done unto us when we love our neighbor as ourselves. So let's get back to James chapter 2. I'm going to read again in verse 8 and go from there. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced or convicted of the law as transgressors. So remember last week, we talked about what being a respecter of persons is, what that looks like. What it actually is, is judging others based on their outward appearance, whether it be status or class, success, how they look, whatever it might be based on the worldly system of this world. Having respect unto one and then seeing someone else as less valuable. Like the Bible gives us the example here earlier in this chapter about the rich man and the poor man. God tells us that this form of judgment is something we need to stay far away from. He calls this type of judgment unrighteous judgment. He says, judge not that ye be not judged. And like he says here in James chapter 2, right here in verse 13, he says, for he shall have judgment without mercy that showeth no mercy. So God himself is no respecter of persons like that. He made the foot of the cross level for us. We all come to Jesus the same way. We all are desperate for his precious blood that was shed for us. For all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. Remember, the Lord of glory. He looks on the inside. He sees motives. He sees desires. He knows when the inside matches the outside or not. The Bible says in Romans 10.10 that with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We all come in the same through faith and repentance. So may we give our brothers and sisters around us that same grace that God has bestowed upon us, that unmerited favor lifting each other up, fulfilling the royal law, loving God first and loving our neighbor as ourself, treating others the way we would want to be treated and living out the love of God. Remember, if you be in Christ, you are a child of the King. So may you walk in this kind of royalty. Be prepared to live like you've never